Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick, uh, Better Call Saul, season three, episode eight, Slip. Meredith and Alonzo slipping Jimmy's back. Uh, he is literally slipping. He is slipping. And realizing he's not the young man who could take <laughs> bounce calls. back. Yeah, yeah. It, it, oh. it takes a toll on your coccyx. <laughs> uh, this episode to me kind of felt like it was about the notion of debt, mm -hmm. not in the grand sense of like I owe the bank or I owe no. my credit card company, but like what we owe each other mm -hmm. and sort of the way people feel like they have to sort of even out the books with each other, whether it's with people they like, people they don't like. Um, you know, so you've you've got all the stuff with obviously Jimmy still trying to hold up his end of the partnership, sure. even though he's barely scraping anything together. And Kim is obviously doing very well for herself. Totally, yes. Yeah. And but and then meanwhile, like you've got Kim mm -hmm. wanting to sort of relieve herself of her law school debt to the firm. Also unsure about whether or not she should take on any more clients, mm -hmm. and she feels like she owes Mesa Verde, Mesa Verde for yeah. for their you know uh, belief in her. So yeah, so I, I thought it was just kind of interesting the the, the different ways these things pan out as far mm -hmm. as like. You know, are we good? Are we done? You know, yeah, that, solid. That, yeah exactly. Uh, it also, there are two very distinct tones uh, in the stories being told with like Jimmy and Kim's line. There was that humor, there was the, you know, just your general, like, this is a fun show. But when we, whenever he switched to Mike and Nacho, uh, mm, yes. God, yeah, like that was like, like you, you had the full on Dave Porter music, like his, <laughs> his soundtrack seeping through all those scenes. You know, right. that one uh, overhead scene of Mike digging and looking for the body of the um, that poor driver. Yeah. Yes, you know, just uh, all that was like, and very all the and all the pill switching, the switching stuff. Yeah, was that was so. It was it was so distinctively like Breaking Bad, and and you know everything I loved about it. But then we got those Saul moments where the, you see where the show's definitely evolved into its own right. being. Um, and then the, I thought the, the stuff with Chuck and the Doctor yeah. was interesting too. Yeah. So so what. What is that all about? Like, so I thought at first Chuck reached out to that doctor to try to like exonerate himself, to be like, no, I have this physical disease and I'm going to you know, I, overcome it. But it, he really does seem like he's trying to almost play a long con game. With well, this. no, I don't know. I think that originally, yes, his yeah. thing was, was his insistence on proving that he wasn't crazy, wasn't mm -hmm. making this up. This is a real affliction. But then I think the battery incident has may have yeah. liter, may have genuinely shook him. Yeah, I mean, because he does even say like, well, what if this was all in my head? Because I, it felt like to me reaching out to her was like, oh, I'm going to show Jimmy in the courts that I am physically ill from all this. So right. Well, I mean, I I I I, I don't know. I think he's yeah. he's got two agendas, and, and clearly mm -hmm. now, obviously. With the with the whole thing with the malpractice insurance yeah. after Jimmy sort of planted that seed, I think he now mm -hmm. realizes that he that he this can't go on, yeah. and that if he wants to have a professional life, that he has to work through it, whether it's mentally or physically or some combination yeah. of the two. So I think he's now sort of open to talking to her about it, you know, and like having these excursions where he'll yeah. leave the house for all and he'll go to the grocery I store know. and he'll buy the soy milk and you know. I know, it was like just run the gauntlet, run the gauntlet, or you know, you could have gone around the long way and not had to go through the freezer section. But you know. this is true. It's yes. always the chip, chip and soda section next to the freezer aisle. Right, and the cold yeah. stuff is always on the I outside. Know. Also, you, you know. don't have to buy soy milk cold. You can get it like off the shelf. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yes, totally. Ah. Uh, but I, the whole thing where he's like standing outside, yeah. and he's like do, doing all the color observation. Mm -hmm. Like that's such a an exercise. Yeah. Like it's the kind of thing that I could imagine. Like if you were afraid of flying or something no, like I mean, that, it's, you it's, would. It's, it is. It's something actually I've done when I, because I used to have such a uh, detrimental fear of flying that I couldn't even go near an airport and look wow. at a plane. And I saw it like actually, you know, it's like, well, my job, I have to fly places. So I actually started seeing a professional about it. And you do, you, you repeat things that you see, you repeat a mantra. Like it, it was so grounded, in, especially in like cognitive behavioral therapy. Mm -hmm. I was like, this show did that really good. And Chuck, and that scene was so not just believable, but encouraging uh -huh. that I hope anyone who like you know suffers through issues saw that and was like, wow, this is it, it, I don't know. It felt more real than I've seen a lot of mental illnesses handled sure. on television. Yeah, and I mean in season one, I remember sort of yeah. reading up online about this whole thing and like, is he making this up? Yeah. Is this is this purely psychosomatic or is there sort of a genuine thing? Mm -hmm. And near as I can tell. Uh, from, from what I recall from two years ago, yeah. that it was like no one has ever quite been able to prove that it is a physical mm -hmm. thing, but apparently it is so 
powerfully a mental thing that it doesn't matter well, if it's yeah. physical or not. And, it's still, you well, know. Well, and we've, we've uh, even discussed this on previous things. You know, I'm, I'm very open that my stress when moving to LA was so bad that I caused uh, like blindness issues for myself. Wow. So you can have stress that manifests in physical conditions. That is, you know, that has been proven. Mm. Um, you know, but was I suddenly blind because, you know, lights are pouring into me? No, that's not the case. It's so it's amazing what the brain can do, convince the physical body. So, I, yeah. But, but, but you're yeah. right though, I think ultimately he is driven yeah. by proving something oh, yeah. to, to Jimmy, proving mm -hmm. something to Chuck, yeah. to, uh, to, to, to everyone. I mean, yeah, the, the, the firm too. himself, yes. I mean, like, I loved when he, when he was telling the doctor, he's like, I, I just wanna have a house party. I wanna have people over. I wanna have people spilling out into the lawn. I'm yeah. like, and she's like, well, small so steps. What, yeah, exactly. I know, but, it, but to have that large goal, I, I don't, I hate to say this, but Chuck is becoming a human to me again. <laughs> He's being humanized and I'm starting to care about him. Well, that's, I mean, that's the thing about this show. It's I like, know. I, I mean, you know, good dramas, even the villains sort of have a reason for doing stuff. Yeah. Like there's a great interview with two people who I bring up a lot in these recaps. Ann Dowd and Margot Martindale <laughs> sat down to, I think, New York Magazine. Mm -hmm. And they talk about how people think, oh, these characters are so mean. But the ones that they're playing come from a place. You know, Margot Martindale said, like, the, the character that she's played on. On, on Justified, it was like no, it was her mountain, mm -hmm. and she had to take care of things. On the on the American, she's a good soldier. Yeah. And Dowd in um, Handmaid's Tale was basically talking about how she when, she when she went to Catholic school, and it wasn't that the nuns were cruel; it was the nuns expected things of you and wanted things to be mm -hmm. better for you. And like the as awful as that woman on the Handmaid's Tale is, she genuinely believes that she's doing something good for these people yes. and sending them to the right yeah. place. And so. Yeah, I think you know it would be all too easy to make Chuck just a jerk or no. just a sort of judgmental prick. But no, he's got his own issues yeah. and he is a human being. And, as that's, much and as that's something I love about how television has evolved because we're we're showing it's not just a black and white cartoon villain anymore. Right. We're showing that people are complex and they make bad decisions out of possibly good intentions. Yeah, I have to say it's not like he's entirely wrong about yeah. Jimmy. I mean, no, everything he says not. about Jimmy and thinks about Jimmy is. It's pretty much in true. Fact. Yeah, I mean, it's, so yeah, he's it's, not, it's in how you deal with Hector, it. You know? you know, that's yes. the thing. Like, I think Hector, we can unequivocally <laughs> totally, say, yes. is a bad guy. At least at this point. But yeah, I mean, like, look at look at look at Gus. That's a yeah. that's a multi-layered, you know, kind of <sighs> representation. I'm so happy so. we got it. We got a we got a little Gus. This little little, little Gus, Gus. That was a nice little meeting. Yeah. So all right, things uh, continue mm -hmm. apace, and uh, we'll be back next week. Join us then.